Does it strike you as unusual that Henry survived relatively unscathed? Not after the epilepsy, um, not after he was diagnosed with epilepsy and he could have remembered it a bit wrong or something. But Henry's quite clear about what happened that night up until the point of passing out. His, his detail is quite significant. Yes. Henry is... I think if a, if, if a traumatic event like that happens, it's hard to be that sure. I really so, do so even, think, in even, my opinion, it's hard to be that sure. What was it about those wounds that ultimately said to you, yes, Henry van Breda has done this to himself? Well, if you look at the injuries, they were similar in nature, they had a similar appearance. It looked as if it could have been inflicted with the same weapons. You would expect to see more irregularity and different movements because as a person is involved in a fight, you move and you pull away and you try to get away from the weapon or the attacker, whereas these were all very line, delicate movements close to each other. And it just it's very unlikely, you know, that you would find those wounds in a attack, and especially where this was described being an attack and a struggle for life and death. You don't believe for a minute that those no. wounds no, were I don't. put there by Henry? No, I don't. Those wounds yes. that he suffered yes. are completely consistent with him being attacked, you feel? Yes. Not self-inflicted yes. at all? Yes. How did Henry react to that allegation, that claim that these were in self-inflicted wounds? It's not something that he can change. He... It's not something he can be lucky that he hasn't had more injuries, but he's not. He can't really feel a different way about people assuming that he is guilty just because he is not as harmed. I guess because it was such um, damning evidence, uh, he didn't react to that. Again, to us it wasn't really damning evidence. Other things that stood out were um, they were all in accessible areas. So obviously when you have a stab wound to the middle of the back, you would think, oh, well, this is unlikely. But these were in reachable areas. I was told that Henry was right-handed and most of the injuries were to the left side of the body, the left forearm especially. No defensive wounds either. No defensive wound either, especially when he described he was fighting with it, actively fighting with the attacker, taking off an axe, taking off the knife. Yet he has got no defence wounds whatsoever. So that's an, another thing that also shows you um, it, he's not necessarily, he's not telling the truth. You accept that Henry said that he fought the attacker? Yes. You also accept that he didn't have any defensive wounds on him, that which would show that he, what would you, you'd normally suffer if you were fighting an attacker? Um, I'm not sure because he did have scratches and things on his arm from the knife flicking that he was speaking about, which I don't really know how he would easily be able to do to himself to kind of, if you're holding someone and they've got a knife in their hands over there, it, it doesn't really make sense that he would have those wounds from anything else. How important was this evidence to the case? It was very important in this case. Um, seeing that this case was built up on circumstantial evidence, there were no witnesses apart from the survive, uh, sister who survived, you know, just by miracle. Um, so in this case, if the state could prove that his injuries were self-inflicted, um, it, it shows that it's the fabrication, you know. If this part of his statement is untrue, how can the court believe anything else? So it was absolutely vital for them to show that. And then secondly, um, if the wounds were self-inflicted and they can prove that, then it also shows that he was obstructing the course of justice. He was misleading the police by creating the impression that there was another attacker on the scene.